Hi, I'm Danny Gregory, and I am obsessed with sketchbooks, my own and other people's. And for years, whenever I would go to a great secondhand bookstore, I would start looking around for any books that had anything to do with keeping a sketchbook. And I've collected a lot of really cool examples over the years, and I want to share them with you and take them off the shelves of my library and put them on video so you can enjoy them too and maybe even pick up copies of your own. Everything I show you, with most, most of the things I show you, I think, uh, are available and you can buy your own copies if you're inspired as I am by them. So today I want to talk about one of the books that changed my life. I mean, I'm not exaggerating to say that when I found this book, probably uh, over 20 years ago, it opened my eyes to an art form that, frankly, has has become my obsession ever since and has become my life, really, which is to keep uh, a sketchbook, an illustrated sketchbook, as, as a diary, an illustrated journal. And this book is called A Life in Hand by Hannah Hinkman. Creating the Illuminated Journal is the subtitle. And... This book, it was written in 1991, um, and it is a small book, but it is a very, very powerful book. It begins with these simple drawings, but what's to me immediately interesting about these drawings was the fact that they weren't just drawings, they also had words in them. Maybe you can see some little words there. And those words were captions, so here, we see an example, a simple drawing of a study in a log cabin. And underneath it, it says, my space up under the eaves. As I'm drawing, nut hatches are picking the logs outside. Now, there's something to me about that that was so beautiful and evocative. Maybe it was the word nut hatches. Maybe it was the scene of being in a little cubby hideaway under the eaves of a log cabin and the idea of these nut hatches pecking outside. But, but also it was the fact that she had done this beautiful drawing and then she had contaminated it, it would seem, by writing words on the page. And that was startling to me, you know. So I have started to see this over and again. So here we see this nature drawing, the little oak tree. And a lot of her drawings are nature drawings. She, she lives in Montana, and she's obviously in love with the land. And so she draws a lot of um, things like that. But this handwriting of hers is so interesting to me. It's so beautiful and, and, and graceful, and it breaks up the page. You also notice the way that she's laying out these pages. And this book has a lot of interesting features in it. Like this thing was another thing that really um, was very influential to me. It's a map, a map made of words. And it's a map that's a memory of a house that she lived in when she was a child, I think. And just the things she heard, the things she smelled, the things she saw, the things she remembers, all in this little map. And that that would be part of your sketchbook was you know, a revelation, it really was. Um, but this book isn't just drawings, it's also got a lot of text, and that text is about different things that you can do to transform your journal, to make it into a record of your life, a life in hand, as she calls it. You know, so this section's on, on meditative sketching, on memory walking, on being a, a field observer, recording the things you see around you. This is another drawing that I will always remember. I've owned this book for 25 years, and this drawing is emblazoned in my mind. And it's this, the way that these coats are drawn, the fact that there's so many different colors, all created by the different textures and patterns that she created. And then these little words, the warm, sooty coat corner. Something so elegant about that, and also so exciting that you could create so much energy and so much color just using black ink on white paper. Well, here's a little story that she tells. A beetle hurrying to cross the drive. When I touch him with my boot, he upends it as if to stick his head in the sand, but he intends to squirt me. This fellow, a casualty too, fell intact out of the sky. 
Another casualty very much expanded Siamese cat. It's a rotten cat. It's a rot, rotting corpse of a dead cat in her sketchbook. There's no limit to what you can draw, she's saying. You can draw anything. You can draw anything and everything, and it all belongs in your sketchbook. Here's another page that was really impactful to me. It's a drawing of, clearly she's sitting on this bench outside this building, but then she writes all the things that have happened to her, that she's observed, the feelings that she's had. It's very honest. It's a page from her journal, from her diary, and it's tied to this drawing, and now it's published in a book, you know? And that's brave and honest, and also shows you how close a companion your journal can be. So there's lots of beautiful drawings throughout this book, and there's also diagrams and maps and all kinds of things. You know, here's a beautiful diagram of pussy willows, and she's diagrammed all the different things that they do. The different, way, the different stages of all of these elements of the, of the pussy willow, the different buds. So again, it's like using drawing to capture, to tell a story, to observe, to explain, not just to be a pretty piece of art, but to be you know, something that communicates. And the styles of her drawings vary. Some of them are drawn really carefully and great, at great length. I mean, here's a drawing of her desk and the stuff that she has on it. Wow, you, you're allowed to draw that? Yes, you are. And, you know, here's just a page, a spread about going on a, just a journaling trip and recording insects and drawing landscapes and drawing kids also drawing stuff. It's just a record um, of what's going on, the way birds move. You know, some of these drawings are really fast. And then you have a drawing like this, which is a detailed study of this woman's hair. You can see my copy is falling apart. That's because it's been manhandled. I think this might be the second or third copy I've owned of this book because I really love it that much. So I'm not going to go into all the text here, but there's an awful lot to think about in this book as well. You know, this book, this section is all about how to communicate your own style, how to communicate in your own way, not just to ape what she's doing, but to talk in your own voice, to write down dialogue conversations that you hear, to draw in your own style, to draw the particulars of what's happening to you. She also goes into details on what kinds of supplies she recommends, pens, books, pencils, watercolors, and so forth, and how to use those in your journal. So she gives you really practical advice. And then this section is really, again, very important, which is about how to design your page. So how to lay it out, how to use your type. So you take this page, this spread. This is a design piece, but it's obviously designed as she's going putting each of these little drawings into squares, a text block, you know, these are, this is the kind of thing that you would normally see in a book, in a magazine, in an ad, a designed layout, but it's here in a journal, in a sketchbook, it's an acceptable thing to do. That was very new thinking for me. Um, I love this lettering style, the fact that she's done this elaborate thing. So, um, let me just zoom ahead here. and. Then ultimately, <laughs> this book is really falling apart. Um, you get to this section, the Illuminated Journal Watercolors, which sounds sort of offhand until you turn the page and you see what she means by watercolors. I mean, that is the most spectacular sketchbook spread I've ever seen. This lettering beautiful perfect calligraphy obviously done with a dip pen in varying shades of ink these little um cut out um, vignettes of animal scenes of a landscape but then also quotes and diagrams of, of footprints all different scales all laid out so beautifully so perfectly i mean look at this here we have lettering that has been dropped out of a dark color i don't know if she painted if she wrote it with watercolor resist i'm not sure but that's an incredible effect and so gorgeous the way that she um, lays out her type and of course these watercolors are spectacular 
here, the type is going up the hill. It's suggesting that we're looking up this mountain and we're seeing these river rocks up above. So the type is creating a landscape, you know, and here's a, an actual topographic map. Examples and samples of things she's found. Two little views of the canyon as if they were little snapshots, but they're not, they're watercolors. Here's a, here's a little specimen that she found of a bone and then it's got the type going around it. Just gorgeous, so much of this. It's kind of mind-boggling. I mean, this to me is the bar set impossibly high. You know, the rest of this book is accessible, but this is just, you just stand back with your jaw hanging open and you say, wow, this is possible? Okay, I don't know if it's possible for me, but it's pretty incredible. And this is just a drawing of a tilled piece of land, of like a little bed with furrows where seeds have been buried, planted and ready to go. And here they are coming up, the stage of plant life. So, a moose. Hannah Hinkman, that's who she is. So, this book, this book, A Life in Hand, is, it's still available. You can buy it uh, at Amazon. You can, you can even get a version of it for your Kindle, which is great, but, you know, I think you're losing some of the, the tactile quality that this has, but that's your choice. I think having a copy on your phone with you on your phone would not be bad as inspiration as long as you had one of these sitting on your desk as well. Um, she also wrote this book, A Trail Through Leaves, and she has uh, another book about basically wandering with her dog gorgeous books as well. Um, these books are more, I would say, they're more like sort of coffee table books. You know, they're full of interesting things, great drawings, beautiful. But A Life in Hand is a book that you want to own, you want to carry it in your hand, you want to have it with you at all times because it's so interesting, so full of information, so full of ideas. And even though there are many other books on illustrated journaling out there now, this to me is still the uh, the Bible, the masterwork. I would strongly recommend A Life in Hand, creating the Illuminated Journal. So hopefully you'll add this book to your library um, or at least take it out of the library if you can. But um, it's full of ideas that will get you and your sketchbook revved up as it does me. Um, hope that that was inspiring and helpful to you and I look forward to sharing more stuff with you in the future. Bye.